So thank you everyone for making time this afternoon. Um, as as it was said, this is an odd talk. So you know, I'm happy to be awkward and odd and feeling a little nervous. So my name is Akil. This is a talk on mindfulness, meditation, and cybersecurity. Uh, who am I? I am a citizen of the cosmos. I am also, like you, embodied in human form. I have roles that I play, like I'm a dad, I'm a partner, I'm a pen tester, and I am. Uh, tra I transitioned out of teaching yoga for over a decade full-time, basically living like a monk. So I have thousands of hours of teaching experience to all age groups. So uh, I hope to share some valuable things with you all today. So first question, why are we here? And I recognize that's a huge question and we don't have that much time to talk about it. But what we can talk about is mindfulness. What is it? Um, how this impacts our relationships within work and beyond. So stress management and communication. And then the last part of this will be an actual practice of meditation because you need to do it in order to understand what it is. So I recognize that the struggle is real. And you know we all know that life professionally and personally is very stressful and usually simultaneously. So this is just a reminder that we have options, but in order to utilize them, we need to become aware of them. So you know, as was said, burnout is a real thing. And, you know, I'm relatively new to this field, but I'm not relatively new to being burnt out. And there's a lot of things that stretch us very thin and make it very difficult to focus on the things we want to. Um, like I said, being a person is hard and each person's situation and life is unique. But the ultimate goal in practicing whatever form of mindfulness or meditation you're practicing is to cultivate compassion so that your life or life for everyone is more wonderful. And, you know, it all starts with you and your life. And we tend to think about how, you know, I'm just one person. What can I do? And this is the answer. So um, what is mindfulness? And in the context of cybersecurity, we always hear about situational awareness. And that's essentially what mindfulness is. It's paying attention to our attention. and and when you start asking those questions, then you can start to look at, well, how does that apply to our life? And cultivating awareness like anything in the context of our work is a skill. And it takes just as much time to cultivate and learn the skill of mindfulness as it does to read logs or understand the output of an NMAP scan or look at vulnerabilities and say, what am I going to do with that? So really just you're learning to pay attention to your attention. And there's been thousands of years of history where people have shared their methods of doing that. So luckily, we don't have to learn it all ourselves. So why should we do this? And you know, you will, through the practice of cultivating attention and awareness, you will learn and understand how you react and respond to stressful situations. And you know, I have this sort of meme here that says, "Knowing is half the battle." I, I remember growing up and seeing this in GI Joe. And I realized in my 20s, well, the other half of the battle is dealing with it. And that's not something we're really educated around. So, you know, especially in getting into the professional sphere, there's not a lot of guidance. We don't necessarily have people who we can look to in leadership positions that are sharing what they're doing. And so this is an opportunity to really cultivate a practice for yourself and to learn from other ways of looking at the world. So, as I said, compassion is really the goal. And what that really means is you recognize that there's a larger context to life of which everybody only has a limited capacity to see. And when we remember that larger context, we can put our life and the situation we're in into perspective. And it truly helps us to manage our feelings, our responses, how we say the things we say, and to understand the value of what relationships we do have, whether it's professionally or personally. So, being able to cultivate mindfulness and understand how compassion plays an important role helps you in communicating. And that's really another whole set of skills. So I'll share some resources at the end. If you're curious, please ask me. I'm happy to share the things I've learned. So as I said, compassion is recognizing that we're all participating in a process that's larger than ourselves. And when we recognize that, it reminds us that we're all on even footing with each other. 
So when you understand your own patterns and your choices, and you have this emotional self-awareness, you can understand how to regulate your nervous system and regulate the ways that you're showing up to help have the impacts that you want. And, you know, a very simple question to ask, because we all have biases about all the information we're looking at, you know, if you're looking at logs and you're keen to looking to see, oh, is this an attack or is this suspicious behavior? That's the way you're going to show up. And that's a bias that you have. And so someone else who doesn't have that may see something that you don't see. And the point is you have to ask yourself in situations when you're thinking something, is this real? Is this true? And what's another way to look at that? So learning to slow down and to ask those questions is a skill set. And for communication, learning to listen is very critical. Most of the time, we're waiting to respond. We're not necessarily listening to the content of what a, another person is saying. You know, it's very difficult in our field. We're getting a lot of emails. We read things. We have an emotional reaction. We don't see the tone of what's being said to us all the time. So being able to understand these things is really critical because when you get into a conflict, you know how to show up in it because conflict is part of life. It's not something that we need to be afraid of or to push away. When we know that conflict can be healthy and we know how to approach conflict, then we have choices. And, you know, that's that's countercultural. So, you know, the purpose of conflict is to lead to resolution. So I've said a bunch of things, and I will make time at the end to have you ask questions. What I want to do right now is give you the opportunity to experience mindfulness. So I made this PowerPoint presentation with this sort of template, and in it was this Walt Disney quote, have feelings about Walt Disney or whatever. The way to get started is to quit talking and to begin doing. And then, you know, obviously here, here's the Buddha sitting here. And it says meditation, because we could all use a little shut up and sit the mm down. So let's get started. And what I'll invite you to do is be in a position in your body in a way that's comfortable and sustainable for you. Often when we think of meditation, you think of someone sitting perfectly rigid in a very upright position, but you can lie down. So if you want to lie down, this is my invitation to you to go ahead and lie down. So just take a moment to be in the space of your body. You can close your eyes. You can keep your eyes open. And begin to notice the space of your body. What does it feel like to be in your body right now? Or just notice your breath. It's a thing that we don't tend to do frequently, but just bring your attention to that. Your attention is like a flashlight. You can point it at things and be discerning about what you're pointing it at. So using your attention and turning it towards the body, the breath, or even your mind. And noticing what's happening. And when I use this word notice, it does not imply a judgment. You can think of noticing as observing something, like observing the wind moving through leaves on a tree. So observe, notice. And when you do these practices, it's helpful sometimes to have what we call an anchor. You can keep your attention either on your body, on your breath, or just noticing your thoughts. And as you notice, Observe whether or not you feel the impulse to try to change what's happening. And give yourself permission. <laughs> if you're uncomfortable, change.
And as you notice, the breath, the body, or the mind, you can notice where it feels uncomfortable, or you can notice where you feel steady and easy. And I will invite you to notice that it's possible to experience both at the same time. So now we'll purposely take our attention to our breath. And I want you to notice your breath going in and then notice your breath coming out. And when you notice this, try to remember that your breath is happening. You are not making your breath happen. Your breath is just happening. And then you can shift your attention to your body. And instead of thinking about your body, just feel it. Is it warm? Is it cold? Does it feel tight or loose? Maybe you're just noticing that you have one because you do have a body. And then lastly, we'll shift our attention to our mind. And again, you have a mind and there are things going on there. And just observe, how are your thoughts moving? Are they moving quickly? Are they revolving around something in particular? Do you have thoughts about your thoughts? Because that's normal. And then in these last few moments, I will invite you to take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. And then once more, breathe in deeply. And breathe out. and then return to the space of your body and your room and maybe open your eyes and feel how you're feeling because now you just did a meditation. <laughs> so here on the screen, you might see that I have some resources. These are a couple of books that I recommend. If you've never done anything like that before and you're curious, these three books will help you to learn a little bit more about what's going on inside of you. Shambhala, Sacred Path of the Warrior is written, it's actually talks given by a Tibetan Lama who 
founded the Shambhala Center. Very interesting figure, beautiful book. Happy to talk to you about it. Nonviolent communication is a wonderful resource to understand how to have conflict. And the language of emotions really helps you to understand what are your emotions and how are you feeling them and what can you do? So with that, I will just invite you to make a community or find one, talk to people in your life about what you're learning and stay weird. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time.